going to have a bias uh, being a Newbridge College man myself, so uh, be prepared for that today. Yeah, well, as you bring it in there, we may as well have a quick look at the two teams. As you say, Newbridge, they have plenty of standout players, a number of which have played in previous cup runs. The powerful Billy Bowen takes his place in the front row. Beside Lee Fitzpatrick and John Walsh. Jack Dennis is at seven for Newbridge. His brother Mark was in the team that won the cup back in 2020. Paddy Martin is at out half once again this year and very much a controlling figure for the team. Another Paddy is outside him. It's captain Paddy Taylor. He is currently involved with the Irish under-19 squad and has been a starter for the last three years. Kieran Mangan is at 13 and is well used to this level and scored a number of tries in this competition 12 months ago. In the back three, it's full of talent. One man in particular, Todd Law, who just like Taylor, plays his third year at Senior Cup Rugby and features at Irish under-19s. There you go, James, you named a few of them, but it looks pretty dominant, that team. Yeah, and uh, there's an advantage of this team that would have been part of the uh, Junior Cup success, so uh, breaking the mould and, and winning Cups, it sets a new standard for, uh, for, for the whole school of what can be done. Uh, if you go back to 2020 and, and, and doing the double, uh, I know the, the final didn't get played in the Senior Cup, but uh, you know when I was playing in Newbridge, you know the, the last time the Senior Cup had been won had been 1970. So you know there wasn't necessarily uh, a belief against those bigger schools. Well, I feel like that mold has been broken with this group, and um, they're not afraid to, to come up to, to Dublin and put out big performances, no matter who the opposition are. Yeah, in the last couple of years they've come up just short, you know, in semi-finals. But Johnny Murphy seems to be building something pretty good in Newbridge. Yeah, I, I think this, it's a testament to uh, to, to Pat O'Brien, the, the principal of, of the program that he set up there over the last kind of probably 10 years, and it's, it's coming through fruition now. Johnny is at the absolute helm of that. Um, and But there's been a lot of kind of coaches from first year up that have had a big part to play in, in where they are now. And um, listen, this group are uh, in a very promising position, but you got to do it on the big stage now again. And, and that's Cup Rugby, you got to show up. Um, and you got to back it up game after game. I was chatting to you before we went on there and I said, how did you get on? And you just sort of looked at me and said, geez, we lost a couple of first round exits. But when you walked into school in first year, this is what it was all about, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the pinnacle. Uh, I, I, I had three cracks at it, unfortunately, and three first round exits. Uh, but it was all you thought about all, all year long. It was, it was the, the height of your, uh, your school's sporting kind of career. So uh, very proud moment for all the lads taking the field today and their families. Um, so just hope they're, they're able to put in a performance they're happy with and uh, they get the results on the back of that. And they're certainly in fine voice as they watch their team. I suppose we should look at Ross Cray. And their team lineup. It's a youthful but solid front row with Henry Mather and Fionn Hogan at props and Owen Norton between them at hooker. James Miller is at six for the school from Tipperary. Also in the back row is Starman and Captain Billy Hayes, currently involved with the Irish under 19s. In the backs, Aaron Maloney is a fourth year, he's at scrum half. Josh Powell is at 10 and also a fine hurler. And outside centre is Robert Carney, he featured for Russ Cray last year in the Cup and has previously been involved with Leinster Schools. And Mayo's Reef Donnelly is at full back. Yes, they come here underdogs, but they'll still fancy it. Yeah, they got swept aside by Newbridge in the league, but at the end of the day, like cup rugby is uh, it's a different animal. Anybody can uh, get rattled on, on, the, on the big stage. So um, Ross Gray will be hoping to have a fast start, uh, put Newbridge on the back foot and, and hopefully get a few scores in early and have them second guessing themselves. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a blustery wind, so it'll be interesting to see if the conditions have uh, any play on how the game goes. But yeah, if you're, if you're Ross Gray, you're thinking about putting as much pressure on that Newbridge team as you can and hoping to kind of knock their confidence a little bit. A couple of their players have played here before and that will help them. You know, younger lads, first time goers might be a bit nervous, but I suppose playing a couple of times here before does help. 100% and like you're looking for the likes of uh, William Hayes, their, their captain, to, to show up today and, and, uh, and leave from the front. but. I think uh, it's it's from from the game yesterday. Uh, it, it's doing the uh, the basics really really well is is what's going to win you the game. And uh, in fairness to to CBC, they just kept plugging away, and, and uh, that's what wins you cup games. The competition as a whole, it's so competitive. Black Rocks and Michaels, Gonzaga, Newbridge. You now there's four. There's plenty of other schools I probably missed out there. But like, it seems to be first round, anyone's game, but also so difficult to keep getting keep getting wins and keep getting through. Yeah, it's just the, the nature of how competitive it is now. The, 
is schools that are almost like little little rugby academies, um, and, and that's what you have the level you have to be at now to compete um, to win a senior cup. So. Uh, we talked about the, the program that's going on in, in Newbridge College at the moment, um, and, and if, if you don't have that sort of setup, it, it is really hard to compete. It's a it's a buy-in, whether it be from the the parents, the commitment that takes, as well as everything else, and, and showing up to early morning gym sessions. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need to be doing video and any sort of special stuff, but it's putting in the extra yards to try to keep up with these uh, kind of Goliaths of schools. Yeah, they certainly are. Well, before we get underway, we'll just have a pause moment and hear from the crowds. Well, as we await the two teams, it's actually quite bl blustery out there and a bit windy. I know the track's obviously perfect, but could play into a factor on both sides how they play. Yeah, it's it's uh, hard to tell what direction the the wind is going. I'm sure we'll get a, an indication as soon as uh, as soon as the first kick is made. But the uh, judging from the the flags on the touchline, it seems to be going from right to left. So whoever wins that toss is going to be uh, important. Of it. Who plays into the win in the first half? I think that's going to play a bit of an advantage. I suppose with Paddy Martin there with Newbridge, he's a pretty good orchestrator, and if the wind's with him, he'll want to kick corners. Yeah, playing the percentages, you know, is the uh, is the more you know senior, grown-up way to play the game, but. Senior Cup Rugby, we love to see the ball being thrown around as well, so uh, hopefully we get a bit of a cracker today and, and not too much uh, of a tactical battle. Well, it's Ross Cray, the first team out. William Hayes, man from Ross Cray Town, and here come their opponents. Paddy Martin there we see. About to hit the pads. And his inside centre and Paddy Taylor. At this level for a couple of years now, and he'll want a big performance. The 10 12 could be really key for Newbridge today. Yeah, I think Newbridge's defence uh, is something that's impressed me over the last few years, and uh, their appetite to keep getting back up for each other. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Ross Gray can deal with that sort of pressure. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the strong parts of their game, so we will see uh, if it leads to a few turnovers, especially in the blustery conditions. Uh, it's going to be hard to throw the ball around. And you talked about it earlier, Newbridge being the final before this season in the league. Coming up just inches short to Gonzaga. So they have a lot of experience in there. Yeah, Gonzaga have become a real um, powerhouse of Senior Cup rugby over uh, over the last kind of six years. Um, They've obviously had the, the feeder. There's obviously been a big focus internally on rugby and the program in there, and um, it's paying fruition. So, uh, Newbridge have obviously had a, had a great league campaign, but Gonzaga now are considered one of the, uh, the premier rugby schools in the country. Referee today is John Carville. He refereeing for over 25 years, he was saying. Still looks pretty fresh and ready to go. Number of years refereeing in the All Iron League, and now it's his turn, which he's done plenty of time before in the Leinster schools. It will be Newbridge and Paddy Martin to get things going. Very accomplished Gaelic footballer too is Paddy Martin. But it's the rugby field today and we're underway in the first round between Newbridge and Ross Craig. Bit early platform for Maloney to set the tone. 
as he looks into the afternoon sky. You can see it is tricky, Todd Lawler. Classy individual is Lawler. Makes a bit of early headway. Good fend from the skipper. But he is brought down. And Conley looks for his team to play their cards first. Sees a bit of a gap in the short side, so he decides to deliver it. The hands are there. First sight down the wing. And the powerhouse winger. Martin using the heavies and fine feet from the Newbridge forwards. Back to Martin looking to pull the strings and in behind. Lawler is chopped, but he gets it away to Mangan. Quick ball is there. So far, Newbridge look very dangerous. They have a couple of numbers on the wider channels. As they creep inside the Ross K22. What about that steal on the floor, though? I was going to say the referee seems happy, but I think it was illegal. Going through the phase as well, Newbridge. Yeah, Ross Gray almost got in there uh, with a good poach, but uh, unfortunately wasn't able to keep his feet. And uh, it's one of those ones where, you know, you've, you've done a great job. Uh, you end up on your back and he gets turned over by the scrum half. Never, never the, uh, the best turnover to be on the receiving end of. The ball's firmly put into touch. What about this explosive Newbridge pack? Lee Fitzpatrick's gets a couple of words of wisdom from John Walsh. Used to be in the back row, did Fitzpatrick. Now he converted into number two. Actually involved with Irish schools training camp recently. In his second row, to Hanley. What's the initial shunt like? It's going towards the touchline. Conley says to his pack, you go and do your job as it ebbs closer to the Ross Cray line. What a start. Referee awards a try. And inside three minutes, Lee Fitzpatrick gets the ball rolling. Beautiful six plus uh, one line out there from Newridge. They're trying to track the, uh, the front seam of the, that Ross Cray defence. Really, really patiently built as well. Um, you can see that's straight off the training park. Very patient at the back there, not breaking out, not getting spooked by the Ross Gray number six coming up the side and uh, a great finish. Must be nice as a number two to start it and finish it. Uh, listen, that's uh, all the work's been done in front of you there. It was, it was a good dart and, and you're just sitting back and waiting for that whitewash to come. So pretty ruthless from Newbridge College. Daniel Connolly gives the skipper a hand and making sure the wind doesn't knock the ball off and make, make Taylor lose his concentration. Not to be is swirling there. Five years at Cup Rugby, Paddy Taylor, two at Junior Cup and now three at Senior Cup, that's some going. Yeah, um, tough, tough to get into to one senior cup side, but I think uh, a player of that caliber, is, you got to have him playing every year that you can. So uh, that was a tough kick there in front of the uh, the uh, pass pupils, actually for him as well. Never mind the wind. Don't often see that. A drop out goes to the five meter try line. Yeah, I think the wind playing its uh, toll there. It's clearly going from big breeze from from right to left behind Ross Gray's back. So a very different throw for Fitzpatrick. Under the pump here. It's number eight. Monolly very simply and casually just drops it down. Then Shane Davitt has an early crack, but Ross Cray looking to spoil the party at that breakdown. No one's facing Connolly at the base as he lets the pack get a couple of key yards. You can hear the shouts from Paddy Martin. Now it will be the number 10. To try and 
get it out of there, but good pressure from Ross Cray. And after a stunned start, that's good repose from them. Yeah, fortunately, uh, it's going to work out pretty well for uh, for Nubers there. Tough getting out of that corner with the whip playing into a breeze. A uh, bit of an unfortunate break there for, for Ross Gray that it's going to be a, a 22 dropout, not a goal line dropout. Ross Cray have won this competition once back in 2015. Actually beat Newbridge on the way to that final in a semi-final replay. 20 points to 19. Maloney puts a tester. Paddy Martin tries to put it long and low. This is opposite man, Poyle, and vice captain for Ross Cray. Says to his inside centre, Jack Deegan, give it a crack. Maloney. First carry for Owen Norton. Maloney thought about opening it up and then give it to the man in the head guard. Out the back. Nice disguise play. First side of Harry Finlay. Bit of a whipper snapper he is. Good countering from Newbridge. Big forwards and Rory Munley trying to be a pest. Still with the black shirt of Ross Cray. And then the steal comes. And defense into attack. From the side from Kildare. Lawler off the outside of the boot. Not like Todd Lawler. You see what he was trying to do, but just maybe a wee bit rushed. Yeah, it's, listen, it's easy to, to say from the cheap seats, but um, look like the playing into that win, it's probably better to go along the ground, but um, good turnover uh, in, in midfield there and tried to relieve pressure. They're at quits here with a line out, so not the worst thing in the world. Good disruption. Martin just left the ball behind him. It's back with Ross Cray. Good passing from Maloney. Deegan seems to be the focal point in that midfield. From Strad Bally, County Leash. Kieran Mangan up pretty quickly. The outside centre. Again, so ferocious are Newbridge and defensively, they're on top. Great strip there by Bohan. Yeah, very good from him, getting his team in the front foot. Daniel Cox. As Taylor opens up the wings. Connolly wants it quicker. And there's a break from the fullback. He is rapid and he is class. Todd Lawler, give him an inch and he'll absolutely hurt you. Very clever. Uh taking that ball through the middle of the rook there. He was uh, knowing the rules as well, having his ball or his foot behind uh, behind the ball and, and taking the opportunity as it came. Opportunistic, but just exactly where you want them. Ah, oh, exactly, yeah, and give that man a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to finish it every time. Actually scored a hat-trick this time last year in a quarter-final against Monkstown. along with plenty of other tries over the last 12 months. Involved in that Irish under 18 Six Nations Festival. Last April was Lawler, now very much in the fold for the Irish under 19s. As is his captain, who's looking to add the extras. Not to be. So two missed kicks, but his team have started rapidly. Yeah, I, I think Ross Gray have been sucker punched a little bit. Uh, they need to kind of get themselves a bit of composure. They have the breeze here. Uh, another kickoff like the last one would be uh, right with the doctor ordered and get themselves hopefully on the, the scoreboard. 
these two teams have actually met in the final back in 1941. Newbridge College winning 9-3 against Sarson College Ross Cray after a replay. Lawler again and then shifts it on. Connolly wants a penalty and will get one. And a quick tap from Taylor. The radar is really with the inside centre. He's looking to go all on his own. He may well do it. Paddy Taylor just stopped. So hungry for work. As is the second try score in the dancing feet of Lawler. Connolly sweeps it away. Martin to his second row and Davitt. It's an absolute onslaught of attack. And the burst from the outside centre. Kieran Mangan, the stretch, and the third score to stampede a tries. Yeah, the, the Newbridge centre partnership is causing big trouble for Ross Gray. It's, it's the one-on-one -on -one tackles um, that are letting them down. And uh, as I said, Ross Gray need to, to gather themselves or this game could get away from them. Junior Cup winner a couple of years ago was Karen Mangan. Brother Dermot, part of the Grand Slam Irish team under 20s, and involved with Leinster. Grand Slam last year. And a classy runner is Mangan. For all to see. is trying to come back, but again to no avail. Ross Cray, they've hardly got off the bus. Yeah, it, it's a frustrating one, but you got to give credit to Newbridge. They're here to play, uh, playing into that wind, taking a, a tap and go in, inside your own half is a brave play, but they're going to back their uh, back their talented individuals and keep breaking tackles. It's going to be a long day for Ross Cray. Taylor did kick 14 points when they beat Blackrock here in Dublin in that Junior Cup final in 2021. As we just have a few admin issues with the referee. But we talked about, you know, we've talked about time again, Taylor, Lawler and Mangan, you know, the three big players, I suppose. Of course, the rest are very good, but within 13 minutes, they've all made their mark. Yeah, and, and that's what you want, your, your big players stepping up, but great to see Newbridge playing out off the last kickoff. Uh, they earned that penalty and, and tapping and going, so uh, I think we're in for a bit of a cracker today if they uh, can keep breaking tackles and making plays. Well, up defensively, Harry Finley, one of a number of fourth-year students for Ross Cray from Nias actually, so we're playing against a number of his friends. But all the decisions and all the tries are going one way at the moment, and that's against Ross Cray and an easy out for Paddy Martin. Patrick goes to the tried and twisted. Connolly just picks that up from behind him. And then coming off his wing, Rory Allen. Rather difficult customer to tackle. As is Lawler. Back three is everywhere. And the half back. Let's see what he was trying to do, but just goes forward and into touch. See if the side from Tipperary can get something going. Yeah, I think 
it's a testament to uh, to Johnny about the pass quality that Newbridge College have had, minus that uh, obviously last pass from Conley to touch, but the, everyone is catching the pass in front of them. Uh, it's clearly something they're they're working on, and it just means that the their backs are able to get into a flow, um, which is obviously hard to to defend against. And Russ Graham need to find a way of dealing with it. Been impressed by Daniel Conley. Yes, he made that mistake, but appeared off the bench last year. Behind Tag Brophy, present in the Ireland Under-20 squad. Again, Deegan takes no prisoners. And then Powell, thought he spotted a half gap, but that was well shut down by Dennis. And he could back row just getting all over the 10. Here's his opposite man and Captain William Hayes. And that burst through the middle from Joe Finn. Maloney over the top, space again. Then the tackling. Seen his work in attack, but Mangan defensively there. Hit the man on the ball. And gets a turnover for his team. Yeah, another big moment. As I said, they were going to use the, uh, um, their defence as one of their weapons today. It, it, and it seems to be paying dividends so far. If you see, they're, they're setting up in kind of one is the inside guy is going for a chop tackle he's had the, the outside guy cleaning the, the ball carrier up with a with a high kind of strong shot I say high it's still below the ball but it's higher than a chop um, very effective and it seems to be causing Ross Gray a bit of difficulty Connolly again the bust from Lawler and then Taylor no one's going to stop him he just glides in. Four tries. And they're so clinical. Great push on the play there from Taylor. Uh, that's a, a sign of real maturity. And uh, <coughs> the ball is passed right at the line. A, a, a brilliant bust, but it's, it's having the uh, ability to be able to read that there might be a bust and working outside the ball carrier. Uh, and that's listen, that's what the top end players do. Um, but it's good to see uh, a young fella having that sort of head in his shoulders. Yeah, and that young fella glasses it between the uprights. And the scoreboard keeps on ticking. Seen both centres get over the whitewash now. I wouldn't be surprised if they get another couple before the afternoon's over. Deegan into first receiver duties there and restarting the game. Just taking his eye off the ball was Daniel Cox. See what they were trying to do. Obviously encouraged to play from deep. Yeah, they've, they've had a little bit of success playing from deep, but it's the uh, the hard part about playing into the wind. You can't just you know clear, um, get yourself out, out of the red zone and, and clear your lines. You kind of have to hedge your, your bets a little bit and hold on to it. They need to probably try to limit as many of those kind of errors given uh, Ross Gray access, but they've a bit of a cushion at least at the start of this game because their attack's been so good. Yeah, you can say that again. What can Ross Cray create themselves? Maloney into their guys. Punched a few in roads so far, and Jack Deegan off the boot laces. Did well to hold on to that, did Norton. Powell says to his back row, Link. And that's perfect. And the wee winger is dancing. Finley. This is better from Ross Cray. The Newbridge defence is still pretty stout. James Miller bounces off a few tacklers. Maloney. As they come round the corner, they need a scrum off. Who's going to play it? Their number three. In Mayer. Where is that ball? Still in an all black jersey. The outside centre, and Robert Corney. Has been at this level previously.
their spell of possession in the match. Yeah, poor, they, poor they, Ross Craig. they need to put a few phases together. I feel like uh, their forwards need to start getting themselves into the game. Like it, it's it, as I said, it's a windy day, so you need to start playing tight. But you need, need your forwards to turn up and get you a bit of game line, and that's the first time they've had a chance to do that. They need to come away here with points. I think the line it needs to, to function. This will be their first opportunity in the 22. Um, so let's see how they go. So the Athlone man in Norton is ready to go. He does his job. And it is back, I think, to him in the right paw. Standing steady at the moment. Maloney might have to go himself, but no. It's not going to be him as the wee break comes. Deegan acts at nine. Penalty against them though. A wee bit eager. Yeah, I think it was uh, Cosgrave who got in there for, for a poach. Uh, always nice when your wingers are actually uh, coming up at one on, on your own uh, try line. So. Newbridge will get a chance to clear here, but Ross Gray will still be in uh, just outside Newbridge 22, so they haven't quite cleared the, the pressure just yet. Up to the 22 as the wind howls against Paddy Martin. Brought down into the bread basket from Connor Hanley. Very athletic second row is Hanley. Bouncing ball could cause all sorts of problems for Finley. He gets out of that hole and then he smashed back in the tackle. Strong tackling, Jack Dennis again. He's a hardy back row, to say the least. And there he is, pouncing on it. Rory Al told to get on his bike and work at nine. And Martin, and then they fizz it wide. Here's the man who made the turnover a while ago in Cosgrave on his own line. Not sure Billy Bowen expected that. Yeah, it looked like he just overran it slightly. I think he expected the ball to come out of the rook a little bit uh, faster. Uh, it's a tough one there when you've kind of overran it slightly and um, you kind of get hit man and ball. So I feel from there, I've, I've done many of them myself, but uh, Newbridge still have a good opportunity here to keep the pressure on Ross Gray. Newbridge will, of course, still be hurting from that semi-final loss last year. 33-31 to Gonzaga. The Mexican back. Last 20 minutes and nearly spoiled it. The Gonzaga jogging up. And here's Ross Cray and busting holes. His corny. He seems lively. In the last five to ten minutes and the penalty's won. He's from Offaly and he looks strong in the outside centre. Yeah, and, and good tactics there. Uh, getting the nose through so when it, when it, you've won high going low in defence if you can uh, beat that low guy you're going to leave an, an, or an offload opportunity on and, and there was two offloads in, in a row there from Ross Gray to get a bit of foot, a foothold into the game and it, you can't get on top of the defence when you're running back so uh, that's how Ross Gray are going to access in this game maybe those little offloads tighten contact start getting a bit of momentum and then the penalties start coming you start getting a bit of a foothold in the game We've talked about Johnny Murphy, you know, he's just 39, been director of rugby for a couple of years and coached since retiring, you know, Munster, Leicester, Premiership titles, Ireland A, and then, you know, coaching at Nice as well. Like, what experience, and it must be unbelievable for the boys to have a figure like him speaking to them every day and giving all his, what he's learned throughout the game onto them. Yeah, how many different leaders has Johnny worked with over the years that are, you know, like generational rugby talent, so... He's been able to be on the inside of all those different locker rooms and now give his perspective to these lads. And, and uh, you can see by how well drilled they are, even, uh, as I said, like the, the detail into how they're 
catching the ball out in front of them, how they're passing, their pass quality, their uh, ability to rock in a very effective manner, taking people off their feet, their line-out drill, all the little small things that are the detail that what makes a good side, and that all comes back to your coach. Yeah, alongside him, Brian Croke, fine player himself, Fornace, doing a good job with the backs as they've exploited the Ross Cray defence in the opening 24 minutes. Mr. Carvel, just making sure the mark is correct. Refereed a very quick game and good game so far. That's the Leinster referee. As Norton deals with the tricky conditions. It's a bit scrappy. James Miller sets the tone again. Newbridge, one turnover into the next. Who wants it? Back with Ross Cray. Pointing ball's a dangerous one, as we've just seen. Here is Finlay again, cutting inside in those orange and red boots. Reef Donnelly thought he was going to have a bit of a chance there, but the pass just gone forward. Back three working well together, but in this instance, unluckily, just went forward. Yeah, and very good. Bay talking about the basics uh, by Carney there, running with the ball in two hands, pumping at the line, pumping at the line, waiting for the Newbridge defender to come out, um, showing signs of a, a very good player there. Unfortunately, uh, the play didn't work out, but uh, you can see that there's uh, some quality in this Ross Gray side. Rob Carney's brother, Robert Carney, I should say, his brother, twin brother, Finn Carney, involved with Lancer Schools. Unfortunately, just coming back from an injury, so misses out. Fine player himself. Steaming through. And that's the encouragement they need. Flying out of the traps into that rock. Yeah, they need to start making every single rook as competitive as that. And that's how you get back in the game. So um, a big launch play here. Get a score and, and it's game on. But, um, you know, the... As the, as the minutes tick by, they're going to need to get some sort of foothold to this game, but giving themselves access with big moments like that is what's going to be key for them. Ross Cray, this time last year, got through the first round against CUS and then met their match very much so in Blackrock College, like many teams do in the quarter final. Referee saying that's gone backwards as Deegan just scoops it up. Can they get something, Ross Cray? Great delayed ball, but it's going to be pulled back. I think he came out of Powell's hands, a judge to be forward. And they're yet to have their moment. That was a great chance there. I think the ref is saying forward pass. Um, but yeah, these, these are the moments Ross Gray needs to seize before the end of the half. Need to get at least one score. Um, just to get a foothold into the game, it's been a good purple patch, but they need some scoreboard pressure. Looking to move it, our new bridge, and then on to the toe. Donnelly trying to glide, but a wall of black and white defence. Rory Allen just slamming Ross Cray defenders and then adding his bulk to the ruck. You could see what they were trying to do there, but execution just letting them down. John Walsh trying to create them all. And he's the winner there. Moved from hooker to prop last season, ever present 
in the first squad this year. One of a number of Junior Cup winners in 2021. That's good work from the prop. Yeah, it was with the uh, great hit to just stop the, the ball carrier and then having the awareness to swim around to the other side while holding them up, knowing that when it comes to a halt and it goes down, he doesn't have to roll away. Um, very clever there and uh, good to see that aggressive line speed as well and putting some shots on. Theon Hogan, battered and bruised, but hopefully he'll be able to carry on. Does look to be limping, but hopefully he shrugs that off. One of the day pupils at the school, only in fourth year. So we'll have another couple of years at this level, as will many of his teammates. Ross Cray this season operating at a 50% win rate. First mistake from Paddy Taylor. Probably even harsh to call that because the pass was just behind him. But out the back are nice and short. Taylor doesn't seem to care. He just wants the ball. Yeah, and it, interesting to see uh, Ross Gray setting up there with a, a, a flat five in uh, in defence off the scrum, which is uh, very hard to attack against. It's a full front line, so nobody's uh, going to have a hard time playing into this wind, especially because Ross Gray can push all the numbers forward, especially off of first phase. Maloney. Back to the 10, and then here is the winger, Finley. We've already seen him. He's taken high and industrious work from the winger to keep going. The referee has the advantage. Interesting what he does here, but they can't attack this Ross Cray backline. Great defensive tackle there by Dennis. He flew across and saved a certain try. I think he's after hurting himself in the process, though. That's what you need your big players doing is coming up with those moments. Um, it was a, a, a great attack by Ross Gray, but it uh, looks like two uh, casualties off the back. Yeah, Jack Dennis, work rate's been off the charts. Brother Mark was in that senior cup team in 2020. Dennis himself appeared off the bench last year in the cup run. And he mightn't be the biggest, but he must be one of the hardest out there. Yeah, he's put in about three big hits so far uh, this game. So yeah, li listen, what, that's what you want from your seven. You want them to come up with big moments, um, especially big shots like that, try saving tackles. Uh, you see the, the likes of Josh van der Fleer and he comes up with all these uh, strips, tackles, that gives just gives momentum, it gives it gives life to the rest of the team. Um, so good to see um, Dennis doing that for, for his teammates and hopefully he hasn't hurt himself in the, in the, in the meantime. On the far side, I think both players are back up on their feet, which is always a good sign. Harry Finley, he's been a bright spark. Yeah, he's had a great game so far. Uh, it'll be interesting to see now. Uh, do Ross Gray go for uh, that six-man line out again? Uh, they, they almost got there uh, earlier on in the half, so um, Newbridge are going to have to dig deep to defend it against us. Irish under 18's Deegan boots it into the stands. Norton. Oh, the trick play. And that is nice. Miller battling. Newbridge still standing firm. Will the dam be broken? Maloney leaves it. Second row and Joe Finn. He's being carried backwards, but he's protected the pill. Looney. This time it's his blindside flanker and James Miller. Still offering himself one back row on the other. Hayes, the captain. No inroads just yet. Will it come? Reaching forward. Must be now. Not just yet. Good composure. Some defence from the Kildare School. The ball must be over the line, but it's been held up. 
Tony yeah. Murphy will be absolutely delighted. Never mind the tries defensively, so sound. Yeah, it's going to feel like a score for, for Newbridge in that moment. Uh, they're going to have to defend again. It looks like we're back for a, for a five-metre penalty, but they're doing a great job at targeting the ball um, and it's just making it hard for the Ross Gray carriers to even place the ball back quickly and give them momentum. Brophy, hungry to get the work. The old school, tap and go. Maloney, on to his number seven. Hayes again. Coming more and more into this game. Maloney, it is slow ball. The backs are going to try and they're going to make inroads and they're going to score. Dan Punch and Ross Cray are back at it and they get something. Yeah, I feel it was well deserved for the amount of pressure they've had in, in Newbridge uh, territory. So uh, you had a great little play there with a, a forward pod playing it out the back and they just picked Newbridge off after that. Kellenard's man from County Leash. Easiest of tries, even celebrated in the way in. And you talked about it was so for their encouragement and their whole going into the halftime, they needed that score. Yeah, even for uh, you know the halftime talk, it, it kind of changes what you're going to say. Uh, they finally now shown that they can break this new rich uh, defense down. So it's going to give them a little bit of belief going into halftime that if they have an amazing second half, they can pull this off. Wind just causes problems. Kickers getting it tight today with the blustering wind, but we still will have another play and can't be long in this first half, but four tries to one. And the last 10 minutes have actually been very even. Yeah, Ross Gray have clawed their way back into the game. Uh, their Newbridge have probably had a few unforced errors, which we haven't seen from them early on in the game. So it's given access to, to Ross Gray and in fairness to them, they've taken their opportunity as well. And Brophy flicked it away and they're here to play now, or Ross Cray. Norton in the wider channels. Their tails are up going into half time. Henry Maher. Back row showing a bit of punch. Hayes defines that word. Referee saying that's going backward and it has indeed from Maloney. Are they trying to go against the grain? That's what happens. The bouncing ball can be so cruel. Bowen, like a back, powering on. My Newbridge looks to finish this half with a flourish. As Taylor's brought short. And then the par and the dynamism. Nice sight of hands from the second row in Hanley. Ross Cray trying to go hard at the breakdown, but New Bridge go through the heart. Connolly, will he take it? He won't. But Billy Bowen stopped just short. Referee spots a knock on. It's actually a penalty. Do you see I, what that was for, James? Yeah, I, I think it was for rolling on the ground. Uh, Great opportunism from Martin with that intercept there. It would have been a cruel end of the half for, for Ross Gray as it was it was a four on one outside. If he didn't get the ball, it was a near certain try for Ross Gray. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, for rolling on the ground, having that extra roll to try to get away from the uh, from the poachers. Um, Newbridge are still, still here. Ross Gray are going to have to exit. Looks like the winds have actually shifted now and Ross Gray are actually playing into a bit of a wind. These two sides have met once this year and Newbridge put a lot of points on Ross Cray. And they're stealing in the line outs as well. Maloney. I should say Connolly. To his number six and Daniel Cox. Martin stands poised, but it's not going to be him. It's going to be the workaholic and Dennis. 
ball just slipped through his grasp. One six to the other, James Miller. Again, the props want to pass, and Mayer probably should have just carried. And that does look to be half time, so Newbridge in control, four tries to one. It's been a very good game, James, hasn't it? Yeah, we've seen some uh, some individual pieces of brilliance, but we've also seen uh, how effective the uh, the game plans have been from both sides, uh, mainly Newbridge in the, in the majority of that first half, but Ross Gray have started to get a bit of a foothold into the game. There seems to be their, their backs are, are sweeping back in, in general play. It's creating extra numbers. It's how uh, how well Newbridge can deal with that at the moment. They're trying to shut it off by flying in from the outside, but if you don't get it right, I feel like there could be a few big opportunities for Ross Gray in the second half. So Ross Gray with it all to do, Newbridge in cruise control. Half time here at Energia Park. It's Newbridge 22. Ross Cray, five.
17 points between the two sides as Newbridge got an absolute rapid start. And then Ross Cray came back into it, one score of their own, and they'll probably need the half of their lives to come back and win. But you never know in rugby, James, sure you don't, but it would be a massive, massive ask. Yeah, they're up against it here. It looks like there's a, a bit of rain coming in as well, just to add to that hill for, for Ross Gray to climb. But they'll certainly give it a shot. And Jack Deegan puts a bit of snow on that ball. Connolly, good end and over ball and over end ball from Paddy Martin. So accomplished in that role, but as soon as I say that, the pass just goes forward. Ross Cray looking to start the second half like they finished the first. Bit of helter skelter at the moment. As Donnelly does his bit. Miller presents the ball. Deegan playing a lot at first receiver. Maloney. Thoughts about taking the contact. Newbridge swarming all over him. Daniel Cox and co. Maloney again. and The man who I have talked about so often, Jack Deegan, punching holes. As is his second row in Joe Finn. Just need a bit of control here. They don't seem to care though, they seem to just keep going. Hayes at the base and they break free. Good big work. And the punch through and the second score of the afternoon from Ross Cray. And they still believe. And so does their back row. Yeah, they're making inroads in and around the breakdown. And, um, they need to probably keep sticking at this, kind of picking and going or offloading in and around contact. It's a, a very kind of French way of uh, forwards kind of swarming in and around the breakdown and then waiting for those opportunities to, to pounce. Uh, it all comes from a, from a new mistake, which that's two now where they've had a knock-ons inside their own 22 that have led to tries. Pretty sure it was the man from Portleash and the guy who you've rated so far in this opening 37 minutes, Evan Brophy. He was opportunistic and poached his way over the line and back to 12 points. Stephen Kerry from Nee Ormond, first year in the role of Ross Cray. That's exactly what he would have wanted as a coach, saying to his team, go on, attack the second half. Yeah, and this is exactly what you want to do. Get yourself in the game. They don't need to mix up what they're doing. They have a, they have a strong pack with a, a good offloading game. Um, Newbridge need to like, shore up in and around the fringes that are breakdown because Ross Cray seemed to be targeting there and, and very effectively. Kerry used to play himself for a young monster working under or with Mark Butler, the director of rugby, first year at the school. Worked for plenty of years with Munster at the academy level and then Irish 19s. And now adding his wealth of experience to the school's game. And it is a vibrant and youth team, so they may be building for the future, but they're here to play at the moment. And is it a case, do you think, Newbridge have stopped playing or Ross Cray have actually been quite good? No, it, it's purely come off of uh, mistakes from, from Newbridge uh, trying to play and Ross Cray have, have finally found their flow and, and are uh, getting a stronghold into this game. Uh, it's good to see. I hope they keep playing into their strengths of in, in and around the breakdown. Um, it was a little... Uh, the winds have actually switched. The wind is at Ross Cray's back, it seems, which maybe they should be probably kicking it instead of taking phases on now when, when the ball's kicked at them. Maloney thought about the narrow side and then why not keep going Corny marauding his way down Energy Park Maloney into the new bridge halfway one centre with a good break the other one knocks it on but he'll get a second chance and every decision is going the way of Ross Cray because they have the momentum and Newbridge just getting penalised 
Yeah, just as I say, kick it, commentator's curse on myself. Uh, <laughs> a brilliant breakout off first phase. And uh, Newbridge's backfield, yeah, getting that one wrong and leaving themselves short in the front line. Uh, as I said, the, the wind is firmly behind Ross Gray here, so it's game on. It's hard to believe, you know, 20 minutes ago it was 22 0, and now it could be in if he knocks this a one score game. Yeah, and that's, just, that's Cup Rugby for you and why we love it. <coughs> Ross Gray are doing a great job now of playing with momentum. You know, they, they finally have their flow and uh, Newbridge need to find a way of, of getting control back in the game because, you know, when you're leaking yards then it's easier to, to come up with offsides and it gives opportunities um, to Ross Gray to build scoreboard pressure. Plenty of this Ross Gray team two years ago got to their first Junior Cup final in 82 years since 1939 lost unfortunately for their sake 26 19 to st michael's it's a big boost for them coming into senior rugby credit to them as deegan calls for a helper has had a pretty good season of kicking the goal but if he kicks this under all sorts of pressure, be one of the finest. Massive boot. Ball falling off the tee, he didn't seem to care. There's a, a boot of a man, it looks like he's a bit of a GAA background. Uh, an amazing kick there considering the conditions. And uh, yeah, as he said, game on. Seven points. And the comeback has just started to happen over the last while. As I say, I would recommend the next score is absolutely crucial, as is this exit. Finley. Always seemed to be the end of something good for Cistercian Ross Cray. Again, the error count for New Briggs is just clocking up and it's costing them. Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, the penalty was there. I thought it was a, the counter up was good, but uh, yeah, as you said, the, all the momentum here is here with Ross Gray and Newbridge need to find a way to get themselves back in this game. Just as it looks like their, their prayers are gonna be answered and a missed touch, they, uh, they knocked the ball on. It's getting um, a bit heated out there, do you see? Yeah. <laughs> Harry Finley just <laughs> maybe barking a few orders to Newbridge. All in good humour, I would suggest, James. I'm sure it is, yeah. What, listen, they're going to need a big defensive set here or they're, they're going to be rattled if they manage to let Ross Gray in again. Maloney. Allows his number eight and Brophy. Tries barnstorming carries. It was taken down eventually. Here's the turn of the right winger, Dan Punch. Got his try before half time, did Punch. One of the six years. Second year at cup level. Joe Finn pumped to the floor. Powell just trying to get the men outside him where he wants them. Nine on nine. But he's offside. Was Daniel Connolly. And I would suggest it could be another three points in order. As the tide continues and keeps swinging towards Ross Craig. Tough call there. Uh, he was, from my eyes anyway, entitled to play. Uh, the he, the nine had picked up the ball. He was on his feet, um, counter rooking. So uh, tough penalty to take there. But Ross Gray have a chance here now to uh, get a little bit closer. So he had his eagle eye. In minutes ago, 
Will it be the same outcome from Jack Deegan? One last look. The radar is pure, and so is the right peg. 22-18, and starting to get spicy at Energy Park. Yeah, the, the wind uh, is seems to be playing a little bit of a factor, but all the same, you got to give uh, Jews to uh, Ross Gray, who fought their way back into this game, and um, Newbridge are going to be worried about that big, massive boot, because uh, if they give any sort of penalties away in their half, it could be three points. Where's that bounce of the ball going? It's a very difficult kick to receive, and I'm not quite sure Paddy Martin meant it, but it was low, and it was a tricky one to field. Yeah, and this is a big moment now for Newbridge. They finally have uh, a bit of access into the Ross Gray 22. Uh, they've had mistakes for the last three possessions, so need to hold on to the ball a little bit here and just create a little bit of pressure and um, see if they can eke out a penalty out of Ross Gray. You saw one of the great comebacks yesterday between Monkstown and Gerrards. We're seeing another one at the moment, but can Newbridge stem it? Paddy Taylor might be the man to get his team back on the front foot. Davit creeps forward. Connolly and Martin's under enormous amount of black shirts and they have another poach. And their back row, William Hayes, but Hayes, Miller and Brophy, they've delivered. I think both sevens have uh, had an, an amazing game today. That was the last thing that Newbridge needed there was a, was a big turnover in midfield. Um, it was their time to put a bit of pressure back on Ross Gray and kill that momentum. Uh, Ross Gray are flying. Hayes had a great junior cup a couple of years ago. He's a fifth year student involved with Munster under 18 schools. It was pro S there. Low centre of gravity all over the ball. Can his hooker find his intended target and they go off the top. And Hayes, destructive. Maloney, as the shuddering tackles keep continuing. There's a bit of scuffle off the ball. As Dan Punch comes flying in. Exactly. Showing the picture, what it means these two teams. It needs to cool down just a little bit. John Carvel's been along, around a long time, and he'll sort this out pretty quickly, you would imagine. As an ex Newbridge pupil, are you starting to get worried, James? Or are you, are you still very cool beside me here and think you'll get it done? I'd be uh, lying if I said I was still uh, as confident as I was when they were, uh, was it 22 points to nil up? Or 20 points to nil up? Um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's been a great second half from Ross Gray. It's exactly what the, what the crowd needed anyway. Uh, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. You can see how much it means to the lads there. A little bit of a scuffle. Some lads just standing up for their brothers. Um, that's what you want to see. And uh, hopefully there's no cards or anything silly here and we can, we can get on with the game. Looks like the initial winners of the penalty, Ross Cray. I've actually conceded it may well have been Dan Punch or a bit of back chat from him or his outside box. Backs, I should say, but the man with number 10 is back for Newbridge College. 
Needs to just take this game on his shoulders, but that's not how he would have wanted to restart this match. Maloney just wants a wee bit more protection. As the Caterpillar is just set up. Todd Lawler has spilled it. Thought for a moment the referee was going to play on. That's why there was a sudden pause. But those conditions and then he seemed to have all the time in the world. But maybe that's a bad thing as well. Yeah, it's so unforced errors. A killer Newbridge in the second half. They're very tidy in the, in the first half. And that gave him the ability to get, to get into uh, attacking positions. And they were the one forcing the, the mistakes. In fairness, the conditions there with a high ball weren't easy, easy to deal with, but uh, they need to start having a few positive moments and backing them up with more positive moments. Maloney to the man who's kicking points in Jack Deegan. Bit static. Still with the temporary outfit. Donnelly. We bit across the park. It's Harry Finley just pushed to the floor. Brophy again. Never too far away from the action is Evan Brophy. Inside ball. Rather slick from Norton. Seemed to have a bit of fun out there. Let's hope the Newbridge player there is okay. Looks to be in a bit lot of discomfort as the play continues. Henry Maher, the fourth year from Port Arlington, is brought down and will look up and see he's conceded a penalty or one of his team have. Maybe should have thought about getting rid of that and getting down town. Yeah, I think when you're playing with momentum, it's it's all about playing uh, a little bit of the pressure game and with the win behind them, it, it will uh, make a lot of sense for them to start kicking the corners a little bit. Um, obviously, they need another score, but uh, with, with the errors that Newbridge are coming up with, you just got to keep putting pressure on them. That was a big turnover there. Um, Newbridge need, need the likes of Lawler and, and Taylor to start taking control of this game again and, and uh, get them back into it. Will it be the turn of Ben O'Connor and Billy Cross to make their mark soon enough? Both fifth years and itching to get on. But not yet, says Johnny Murphy. As their fans are still singing loud and clear. Be a lot of deep breaths in that huddle. What do you think the coaches will be saying there to Newbridge? They'll just be telling them to take a deep breath, center their thoughts, because when you've uh, been on the receiving end of 18 un unanswered points, you're, you start to panic a bit, you know. They'll be telling them, listen, we're still ahead. We've we've got possession now. We have a chance to kind of right the wrongs that we've had since we started this half. Let's just go back to doing the basics really well and get ourselves back in this game. Dennis, he's a hardy operator, and I think he's going to carry on. Looks to be take a lot worse to take off the back row forward. Take a lot more, I should say. Into the tennis courts, the ball flies from Paddy Martin. And one of few attacking platforms for Newbridge in the second half so far. Let's see if they can get back to what they were doing in the opening quarter. Because it was a joy to see. And maybe he's not going to hang on. Jack Dennis, unfortunately, has proved one bridge too far. And he is replaced. As Monnelly did his part, but the throw wasn't straight. And the replacement has come in Paddy Ford. Actually very unlucky not to be involved in the squad last year. Paddy Ford, and he's done well this year. To get in there, more changes as well. Ben O'Connor. And then I think 
also Billy Cross. Maybe that's what they need, a couple of fresh faces. Yeah, it's a tough one for Montgomery there. Like the wind seemed to take the ball a tiny bit, uh, which skewed it and made it look crooked. But anyway, it's the last thing Newbridge needed. But anyway, it's on to the next ball and uh, try to get a bit of momentum back. Lawler lets it settle. Still cool shoulders. Joshua Paul, the vice captain. Was up in the fullback's face. Paddy Taylor still standing up and being counted. As is Billy Bowen. Brother Tom involved in the squad a couple of years ago. He'll be watching on and be proud of his younger brother Billy. As Ross Cray. To make a stampede at the breakdown. You can see and hear which way that penalty's gone from the crowd. Not a big moment there from, from Hayes. Um, that's what you want to see from your captain. A, a great tackle and counter rough. Uh, comes up with a, a big steal and uh, Newbridge were ill disciplined coming in the side. Where that's what happens when you're under pressure, you, you make rash decisions. Deegan just probes the touchline. Trying to squeeze every last drop from a very tight angle. Norton just flicking that ball, but just like his opposite man minutes ago, just not straight. And you talked about it earlier, very easy from the cheap seats up here to blame the hookers for the throw. Yeah, listen, the, the wind is obviously very tough to, to judge in, and, and we've seen in the last two throws that it just needs to skew it a tiny bit for the ref, uh, enough for the ref to uh, to give it the crooked throw. But, you know, I'd like to see ones, especially when they're not contested, been let go. But maybe that's coming from uh, the point of view of a hooker who's had a few crooked throws given against him. So, Connor, with his first whip away from the base. Substitute to substitute, Ford. Tr trying hard. O'Connor in the yellow boots, just not being rushed, but then the defense, credit to them, made sure of that. And Dara Cosgrave had no option. About six black shirts all over the left winger, and there was only one winner there. So the three time cup winners in Newbridge are under the pump. Trick play. Brophy. Just about backwards, I think. Deegan. And then the number seven in Hayes. Standing up and leading by example. Has that ball been stripped? Referee says it's still there for Maloney. Just need to stay compact. Powell will be waiting, and now he gets it. Haven't seen too many breaks from the outside half. Will his time come? Miller just took his eye off the ball. With 15 minutes to go, they can't really afford that. Newbridge, all the space. Cosgrave, all the gas. But he was well tracked down. Taylor's been absolutely everywhere. And Lawler back with a bit of confidence. Ready to see him score a try through the rock. The time the dam was just shot on him. Taylor. And then Mangan. Haven't seen too much of Kieran Mangan. The last 20 minutes hasn't got too much ball, nothing to do with him. Continuity in the skill level. It's pretty good out there. The ball still is with Ben O'Connor. Had to dive in that dead forward. Was there man in the side? 
and off their feet the double dunter at the breakdown yeah Newbridge are uh, doing well to, to counter counter attack and, and get themselves uh, into a more promising position I still feel like the, what we talked about earlier about how good their pass quality was and everything like that it seems to have dipped in the second half I don't know whether it's nerves or uh, it's the conditions but they just need to settle down concentrate on the stuff that uh, was doing them in good stead in the first half and uh, realise that they're still ahead here they just got to keep control of the game and, and uh, make sure they're not making unforced errors Dara Cosgrave the left winger getting more and more into this match actually missed out last year with an athletics injury it's good to see him get his chance and when will the chance come for Charlie O'Loughlin he looks ready to go a few big boys out there James I wouldn't fancy it myself. No, listen, it's it's uh, it's a lot easier on the body sitting up here. I can tell you that. But yeah, that's that's a testament to the uh, the, the programs that are going on in, in schools these days. Of lads are hitting the gym nice and early and, and are, are getting in proper good condition and ready to play senior rugby even by the age of 17, 18 years old. Rather gingerly, Owen Norton gets himself back into place how long he'll last we'll see but still looks raring to go the coaches call that one when you pointed out the wind has very much changed seems to be at the backs of Ross Cray since the second half kicked off Josh Montgomery with his first throw not the outcome he would have desired. Maloney under a couple of pressure bodies. And the luck is going the way for the team that have travelled an hour and a half from Tipperary in Ross Cray. Wicked bounce for Lawler. Yeah, it looks like he touched on the way out as well, so it's a Ross Cray line out. Yeah, Newbridge uh, need to figure out a few options in the in this win to make it a bit easier on Montgomery, but both teams are going to have to deal with it. Charlie O'Loughlin does get himself on, also has a twin brother involved in the squad. As Hayes does what he has done all afternoon and carried Harry Finley, what's his pass like? Hits his target anyway, and it's pretty good. Until he waits his normal nine, and Maloney. Low and powerful effort in the centres. Coming back this open side way. Speaking of open side, it's actually his mate James Miller. Not the greatest service. Just going backwards at the moment. But then the gallivanting from Joe Finn. Not sure how that came back on the Newbridge side, but they won't be caring. Must have been a turnover I didn't see. As Josh Montgomery bundled his way forward. Taylor in a 10. O'Connor, the show and go from Paddy Taylor. Trying to sweep round. And Jack Deegan shooting the line, taking the gamble. Really is opening up there, like a game of sevens. Where did Lawler come from? Like a thief in the night there. Standing start from Monoli. A wary operator. Back inside from Billy Cross. Talented individual. And the jink from Taylor in close quarters into the last 10 minutes. What's the intercept? It's been pounced. The comeback could well and truly be accomplished. Dan Punch. And for the first time this afternoon, 
Rose Cray take the lead. And their hysterics, their fans, and rightly show the comebacks of all comebacks. Dan Punch with an unbelievable read out the back there. Uh, Newbridge uh, were trying to play. They didn't have enough momentum to uh, to be playing out the back. you got to take the front line on the first. and um, They didn't earn the right to kind of go wide there. A long pass in this win. And, and in fairness to Punch, he read it well and finished under the sticks. We're pretty speechless up here. But you were always cautious, even when they went 22-0 up, you said this game's still in anyone's anyone's grasp. All it took was for uh, Ross Gray to get back uh, momentum in the first half. It was all the unforced errors that were killing it for them. Um, now it seems to be new, which were making all the unforced errors. They need to gather themselves here off this kickoff and and, uh, and need to score next or else it's uh, it's going to be one way. Jack Deegan, oh, it's the simple extras. Proud moment for the fans, but they still have eight minutes to hold on to this three-point ball game. Can Newbridge dig deep? They would have been one of the favourites heading into this competition. Plenty of experienced bodies, but even they've been rocked. What oh, can the youngsters of Ross Cray hold their own and again the smashing right peg is that Deegan he's took this game by the scruff of his neck oh, it's a, a brilliant exit and exactly what Ross Cray needed there now it's all pressure back on a new bridge with this line out they've lost their last two and they need to get their set piece going if they want any chance to, to win this game Montgomery. Taylor won't stop trying. He's got a big future in pa Paddy Taylor in the game. Right now his concentration is getting out of this first round of the cup. Lawler backpedaling but regains a wee bit of composure and helps his team out. Ben O'Connor What's a strip in the tackle. Deegan seems to be able to do everything, but Newbridge still have it. Taylor, hard man to break down. Three bodies in the end do their job. Billy Cross and Taylor just alternating between 10 and 12. Here's Cross. Lawler can't give him an inch. This time he is. Scraggled and Paddy Ford flicks it out of the back of the hand. He's added a bit of punch, has Josh Montgomery. Brian O'Rourke told to leave it. Taylor thought about the offload, but decided against it, and rightly so. Rory Taylor, this time. O'Connor needs to pick up the tempo. Daniel Cox. Hard man to stop. Lawler in the different coloured boots. Pushing it on was the big number eight in Monoli. But Sean Killeen making his name as Taylor swats bodies down, but he's brought down himself, working the short side. Lawler stepping his way out of a phone box as they creep into the 22. Digging deep, our new bridge coming back. Charlie O'Loughlin, the big forward. Are their numbers wide? There looks to be. Can they run it in? But the big tackle comes across from Joe Finn. But I think we'll come back for a penalty. Lawler with a few huge carries in there. You can see how explosive he is in contact with that quick feed and then that pump end. They're going to need to come up with, uh, with something big. That was a great phase play there. I'm not sure how many phases it was, but great composure. You're the coach here. What do you do? Uh, 
that, I think you uh, you probably kick the goal, but um, it depends if they have a, a special scrum play maybe uh, in, in their mind, but um, you're not going to go for a line out anyway, I don't think. It's either kick the goal or, or take a scrum and try back yourself to score. Looks like you're out for a tap and go penalty, is it? The clock says 66 26, but I'm not so sure, so we'll keep an eye on that. Weirdly, Ross Gray only back five. Montgomery standing over the ball. It's the tap. It's last chance saloon. O'Connor. The heavies are around the corner. O'Connor again told to get out of the way as his pack takes centre stage. Ross Cray have to go low now. Try and snaffle it. Connor Hanley. The game ebbs and flows. The pick and jam. When will they decide to go out the backs or will they? The par comes from the puck. O'Connor again stands and waits. But it is his puck that look to take centre stage. But it mightn't be the right outcome. It's been held up. There will be more time. It's a great addition, that rule. Um, you got to be aware of it when you're picking and going that um, if the clock is up, that would have been game over. So you have to have a bit of game awareness there. One clock says 70, the other one says 67, 30, James. You just got to deal with it. Taylor jumps and weaves. Tackles up out of the line, James Miller. Taylor, skip pass. And what about the gas, Mangan? The top tackle from the back row where Mangan could have been in or one of his teammates. Cox waits, but it's not going to be him, it's going to be Bohan. But the disgust on his face as he knocks it on. Maloney back to Deegan. Needed to find touch, doesn't. Taylor absolutely dead on his feet. And rightly so, he hasn't stopped. O'Connor, back to the head guard on the second row forward. Billy Cross goes for the snipe. Monolay. The workaholic, O'Connor, Mangan, Taylor creeps inside the 22 into the last minute. What can Journey Murphy's men, can they get themselves out of this hole? O'Connor, Taylor thought about going and then Mangan. But the door has been shut and then it opens, Lawler. Bundles forward. O'Connor. Can Newbridge smash and grab it at the end? Ross Cray fighting like their lives depend on it. Phases after phase. Referee saying that's gone back. And then he's given probably the biggest penalty in Tipperary on Ross Cray. Have got it from the referee. And that could well be that. Must be the last phase as the captain, William Hayes, bundles it forward. Still time. Henry Maher keeping it in there. And that will be that. One of the biggest comebacks in schoolboy rugby. They were 22-0 down 
to Newbridge College, but Ross Cray have done it. A team that lost to Newbridge by 50 points a couple of months ago. The smash and grab on one of the special days from the school in Tipperary, Energy Park, has turned to Ross Cray colours. 25-22, a smashing victory. James, sum that up. You got to take the hat off to Ross Gray. 25 unanswered points. There is the uh, definition of when you're back against the walls, standing up for your brothers, putting it together, putting pressure on the opposition team, and dogging it out when you need it. That defensive set in the last five minutes, that's the show of real character, and I hope this team go on to do well. There's tears out there from the Ross Gray players. They can hardly believe it, but full credit to them. And so unlucky, I suppose, for Newbridge. They were one of the favourites. Yeah, you could see the quality in the team in spells, but it was their, uh, it's the basics that let them down in the second half. And I think the, the knock-ons just gave so much energy to Ross Gray. And in fairness, they took all their chances. Uh, did a few big line-out turnovers towards the end and, and coming up with that big poach to, to win them the game. And, and that's the, the sign of a good team. And that's Cup Rugby for you. Well, they'll be singing in the streets of Tipperary tonight as Ross Cray march into the quarterfinal. As for Newbridge, they're out. Full-time here at Energia Park. Ross Cray have done the job. 25 points to 22.